Okay. All right, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Peter Zanoni. I'm the city manager for the city of Corpus Christi. And we're gonna begin our joint city of Corpus Christi and uh, New Aces County uh, press briefing on COVID-19. We do a joint press briefing every day. And today is uh, Tuesday, uh, May 5th. Uh, I'll be presenting uh, some of the statistics on COVID-19 cases and how uh, those recovering are doing and, uh, and the status of those that are in the hospital. And then Annette Rodriguez, our director for our public health district, uh, will talk about Thursday's drive-through testing uh, location uh, or event that we're going to have. Also give an update on the National Guard and talk to us about some of those uh, safety tips on how to stay healthy and avoid getting the virus and avoid spreading it uh, to include wearing masks and social distancing. County Judge Barbara Canales will talk about the state of Texas mobile testing site that's in Nueces County. They have been through the governor's order uh, with the assistance of the National Guard and other first responders going across the country, uh, state, I mean, and uh, hitting some of those rural areas where testing is not uh, as accessible as in a city setting. And she'll also highlight the governor's orders. The governor had a 2.30 press conference today, Governor Abbott, and we didn't uh, expect this, but he, because uh, he was going to have, I think, one on Friday, but he announced uh, some more relaxing of uh, some of the uh, close, closures that he had in his prior orders. And that includes updates on when uh, salons, beauty, sh beauty shops, uh, gyms, and uh, other facilities can open. And so Judge Canales will hit some of those highlights uh, for the viewing public today in case you missed the governor's press conference that was at 2.30. And then uh, Mayor Joe McComb is here. He's going to talk about some of the work he's done at the legislative level and with other uh, mayors across the state. He's worked with Senator, State Senator Judith Zaffarini and he's also continuing to work with a group of big mayors that he's worked with since day one on COVID-19. He'll give us an update on that. Okay, so that's gonna be our uh, lineup for today. And so I'll begin by talking about the, the COVID cases uh, since yesterday's briefing. So every day at four o'clock, we look back at the past 24 hours and see uh, how are we doing, how many new cases might there be who's in the hospital, uh, how are those uh, that have had the virus recovering. And so since yesterday at four o'clock, we have one additional new uh, case to report, and that's on our graph today. So you can see uh, we have a few more numbers than we had a week ago this time, and we had several zeros last week, but um, looking at the seven-day spread, three, four, and went down to one, zero. Yesterday was a, a big a number day with six, and today we're back down to one. So. That brings our total cases of those that have the virus and those that have recovered to 114 in New Aces County. We still have only three deaths in the county, which is good. Uh, two from the city of Corpus Christi, one from Robstown. The distribution between male and female is pretty evenly distributed. The additional case we had today was a male uh, patient. So 59 males and 55 female persons uh, have had or have coronavirus. We track this by age group as well, and uh, we have nine different age brackets from zero to 19, and then from 20 to 89 is in a 10 year spread in between each one of those age groups. The majority of the cases are pretty evenly distributed from the age group of 20 to, to 79, and it's pretty roughly distributed 17 to, to 20 or so in each of those categories. There is one person in the 80 to 89, bra 80, 89 year old bracket. And then testing is important for the community and we continue to increase testing, both at our own facilities, the commercial labs, as well as the state helping out with some of these uh, rural commercial labs that we'll talk to you about this afternoon. There was one today, in fact, and then there'll be one more on Thursday. But today in our labs, we tested three uh, specimens and the Private labs like a LabCorp or a Quest, they did 149. So a pretty good total for the community today, 152 tests performed. So to date, we have 3,190 tests that have been done in our area. Okay, now we know that there's that number of 114, but in fact, most persons, 60, just under 60%, 59% have recovered. And we have a slight variation on the, the donut chart that we have been showing. So we know, unfortunately, there were three deaths and we had been counting those in the, in the um, 
in the unrecovered category, but we broke them out separately today after getting some input from some of our media folk yesterday. So three deaths, 45 active cases, but the majority, 66 or 59% have recovered. So that just puts it into perspective a little bit. We have uh, four persons in the hospital. One person was admitted today, another person was discharged. So it's the same as yesterday in terms of total number in the hospital, but the person that was admitted today was admitted in the ICU unit, intensive care unit. So there's a total of two persons in ICU and four in total in the hospital. Since we've been tracking this, uh, 30 persons have been hospitalized, and that's an increase of one uh, from yesterday. Okay, so that's that chart there. And then when we look at where are these folks, the majority obviously, because Corpus is the biggest city in the county, are within Corpus Christi. 96 persons of the 114 are in the city of Corpus Christi. There's two in Robstown, seven in Port Aransas, seven in rural Nueces County. And then the, the new one that was added today is in Agua Dulce. Uh, that's up there by Alice, kind of in the outskirts of the county. So that's a new a person and new for that Awaduce area. Okay, and then yesterday we talked about the zip codes. We had put zip codes, a zip code interactive map up many weeks ago after the community had asked for it, and we hadn't shown it in a while, and it, it came up in our meeting yesterday, so we thought we'd show it again today. This is on our website. It's interactive, and uh, the key thing to highlight is that in the red areas where the majority of our population is here, on the south side of town, and then a little bit on Flower Bluff in the lower part of the island, this whole area, and that one there in the middle, that includes four zip codes. The zip codes of 78412, 414, 416, and 418. <clears throat> those four zip codes comprise 50% of all those cases that we have in Nueces County. So 50% of the 114 cases are found in these red areas. And um, <clears throat> just maybe one other thing to point out is that the, the lighter colors, the tan, is where there's fewer cases. And so here, which is more rural, and then here, uh, not so much housing there. It's along the, the industrial and, and I-37 corridor. Uh, there's fewer cases there. And then the orange, uh, those zip codes are pretty big land masses. And that's going to be the uh, second highest category after the red one. But uh, that was something interesting to point out. Also, this, the 78412, this one here, is uh, along that Ocean Drive or the Bayfront area. Okay, so that just reminds us where the cases are <clears throat> or uh, where, they, where there's either active or recovered cases. And again, that is on the city county website. We have a joint uh, web page on coronavirus. And uh, everything I've told you this afternoon is on that website, and it's interactive. It's updated every day uh, to include that zip code map. So that may be something that you can uh, look at if you want additional information. Okay, so that concludes my portion of the briefing. At this point, we're going to have Annette Rodriguez come up and talk to us about uh, the drive-through testing, uh, the National Guard testing, and some of the health tips that we continue to need to employ to keep everybody safe. Thank you. And we're going to get a translation first by Gabby. Thank you, Gabby. En las últimas 24 horas se han reportado un caso más en el condado de Nueces debido al coronavirus. Actualmente en el condado se existen 114 casos confirmados. Entre esos 59 son varones, 55 son mujeres. La mayoría se encuentran en el rango de edades entre 30 y 39 años. En total se han llevado a cabo 3,190 pruebas entre hospitales y el Distrito de Salud Pública. El caso más reciente es un residente del área de Agua Dulce. 66 de los 114 se han recuperado por completo. Cuatro personas con en el hospital y dos se encuentran en condición crítica en la unidad de cuidados intensivos. A la fecha se han reportado tres fallecimientos. El día de hoy se llevaron a cabo 152 tomas de especímenes entre laboratorios privados y el Distrito de Salud. 45 casos aún están activos. La mayoría de los 114 casos se encuentran en la ciudad de Corpus Christi, específicamente en los códigos postales 78414, 78412, 78418 y 78416. Este mapa interactivo se encuentra disponible en la página de internet a la dirección www.cctexas.com diagonal coronavirus. Thank you. Good afternoon. Annette Rodriguez, Health Director. The Health District will have our next drive-through this Thursday, May the 7th, in Bishop, Texas at 8 a.m. 
The National Guard is also operating a collection site in Nueces County, as well as Aransas and San Patricio County this week. To make an appointment, call 512-883-2400 or visit texascovidtest.org. We continue to think of ways to keep the public safe as the economy reopens. We've spoken about the importance of wearing face masks in public and the continuation of social distancing. I think wearing a mask warrants more discussion since it is extremely important. While wearing a mask, is, while wearing a mask is not mandated, it is really important because we still do not have a lot of people that have antibodies to this highly contagious virus that can also be deadly. Nor do we have treatment or a vaccine at this time. Uh, therefore, you must do your part to keep others from getting sick. Some say, I'm not sick, so I don't need to wear a mask. I'll tell you, that is a very selfish approach when there are a lot of elderly people in our community. And while you may not feel sick today, tomorrow you could have COVID-19, and then the people you were with yesterday, while you were feeling fine running around in the community without a mask on, you could have just infected them and possibly even hospitalized some of these citizens. Please don't be that person. Do your part and wear a mask when you go out in public. Another element that is also vitally important is disinfecting and the use of hand sanitizers to help mitigate the transmission of COVID-19. With the increase in the use of disinfectants and hand sanitizers, the Texas Department of State Health Services is warning the public of improper use of hand sanitizers and disinfectant products. From March to April of this year, the Texas Poison Control Network has experienced a 64% increase in calls with health concerns compared to the previous year. DSHS recommends to the public when using disinfectants and hand sanitizers, always read and follow directions on the label. Also, only use water at room temperature for dilution, unless stated on the label otherwise. Avoid mixing chemical products. Never mix bleach with any other product. Bleach can become a dangerous gas if mixed with other household chemicals such as uh, um, ammonia. So, and we had a lot of that early on where people were using bleach and ammonia at the same time just trying to disinfect uh, the whole house and then they were getting chest pains and they were feeling faint and that's because of that gas that it produces. Use hand sanitizers only when soap and water are not available. So the best method is still to wash your hands with soap and water for 20 seconds. We advise that each business, workplace, and household come up with a plan on how they are going to safely disinfect frequently touched surfaces. The Center for Disease Control and Prevention recommends when developing your plan to determine the needs to be cleaned determine how areas will be disinfected, and consider the resources and equipment needed to take care of all of that. As always, continue to stay safe, stay healthy, and always stay informed. Thank you. I will now turn it over to Barbara Canales. El Distrito de Salud llevará a cabo la próxima toma de especímenes este jueves 7 de mayo en Bishop a las 8 de la mañana. La Guardia Nacional también está llevando a cabo pruebas en áreas del Condado de Nueces, Aranzas y San Patricio. Para hacer una cita, llame al 512-883-2400 o visite la dirección txcovidtest.org. Hemos recomendado en numerosas ocasiones el uso de cubrebocas y aunque su uso no es obligatorio, es importante ya que aún no contamos con un número de personas que tengan anticuerpos contra el virus, que es altamente contagioso y puede ser mortal. Tampoco tenemos tratamiento o una vacuna. Para las personas que optan por no usar un cubrebocas debido a que no tienen síntomas del virus, recuerde que hay muchas personas de edad avanzada en nuestra comunidad y si es posible que no se sienta enfermo hoy, mañana podría tener el virus y haberlo contagiado con las personas que estuvo ayer mientras se sentía bien. Andando por la comunidad y sin usar un cubrebocas, podría haber infectado y posiblemente incluso hospitalizado a algunos de nuestros residentes. En cuanto a la desinfección y el uso de geles antibacteriales para manos para ayudar a minimizar la transmisión del virus, el Departamento de Servicios de Salud del Estado de Texas está advirtiendo al público sobre el uso indebido de geles antibacteriales y productos desinfectantes. En el estado se ha experimentado un aumento del 64% en llamadas con problemas de salud. Si va a utilizar un desinfectante o gel antibacterial, siga las instrucciones de la etiqueta. Solo use agua a temperatura ambiente para la dilución. Evite mezclar productos químicos y use gel antibacterial solo cuando no cuente con agua y jabón disponibles. 
Thank you so much and good afternoon. Barbara Canales, Nueces County Judge. I'm here today to make certain that everybody has a good summary of the governor's news conference that happened just a few hours ago. And I believe that you're going to find that the news, I hope, is welcome for some of you, and it may also concern others of you. And I would like to make certain that we can both uh, create a balance of both the good news and the news that might come of some concern to others. But I will tell you, listening to Director Rodriguez, I think all of the advice that she has given today absolutely needs to be taken to heart. And so let us begin in understanding where we're headed uh, after the governor's news conference. So first, this was the first briefing since the governor announced phase one of reopening Texas, which basically focused on restaurant, restaurants and retailers working at that 25% capacity. The governor has announced that uh, effective this Friday, May 8th, hair and nail salons, barbers and uh, tanning facilities can reopen to customers provided, and this is the big one, they maintain social distancing between customer stations and those in waiting areas are either able to maintain the six foot distance or they will have to wait outside. Stylists and customers are strongly encouraged to wear masks and you'll remember in my last order, we highly recommend masks, particularly where social distancing is not possible. So this is a good example of where you should wear masks. Gyms and other workout facilities will be allowed to open Monday, May 18th. Again, they have a restriction, and that is that they operate under 25% capacities and that showers and locker rooms remain closed. Equipment must be disinfected between each use, and customers are advised to wear gloves to cover their hands and fingers. Now, some of the things that did not change at this moment are bars. Bars are still closed, and there is not a reopening date for bars in Texas. He says he is absolutely getting input from bar owners about their strategies, and he believes that he can put them into place and operate safely in the future. Now, non-essential manufacturers can reopen at 25% capacity also on May 18th. So we're going to have two trigger dates, right? May 8th and May 18th. Facilities must use staggered staffing to ensure people aren't all moving through the doorways at the same time. Those are for those non-essential manufacturers. There's been a lot of interest in weddings and funerals, and so let me tell you what the governor uh, was able to clarify. Uh, weddings, funerals, and memorials can occur in Texas so long as participants observe social distancing, such as alternating rows and maintaining six feet between groups. So in the churches, we're going to ask that there is social distancing, and of course, there's all kinds of creative and innovative ways to address all of these issues, but he does say that weddings and memorials and funerals can transpire. So I do want you to know those are the highlights. Uh, I'd like to repeat something that Director Rodriguez talked about, and that is this incredible testing that we've got going on. According to the governor, Texas tested 18,000 people on Tuesday alone. We were part of that success. And I want to reiterate that this testing that's gonna happen on Thursday, that I don't believe it's too late, Annette, to go ahead and call the number for Thursday testing. And so please make certain that you can either um, register online or you can call the number, which I believe is available to us. The, it will be at 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. One of the things that I'd like to reiterate is that we really look to make sure that um, if you're part of that vulnerable population that is over 65, if you're a member of the first response team, first responders of any kind, healthcare workers, you are a perfect candidate to have this testing done. If you're experiencing any symptom, you're a perfect candidate. There's a laundry list of symptoms and you'd only have to have one in order to meet that criteria. So this testing, this statewide testing that's going on is happening in your backyard and will continue Continue to do so when the guard leaves. I want you to know that I'm grateful to the health department for being so responsive to the to what we're hearing at the county, which is that there were vulnerable populations that really wanted to get tested, but they were not able to maneuver and, and drive themselves all the way to Corpus Christi or to the fairgrounds. So we move to them. This is the response that you expect, and if there are other areas that also need a similar response, 
I'm confident that we can also address those needs as well. So by going to Bishop, we do, we do leave the safety net of our perfect spot memorial. I want you to know that it's with great pride when the, when the captain of the guard says this is the best operation he's seen and he's been all over, it makes me feel great that we have an operation that is second to none in Texas. So we're going to continue with that first class operation after the guard leaves. And if we need the guard to come back, we will make that request. I also want you to know that you've been hearing a lot in the news about uh, the drug Remdesvir. That drug uh, has been requested by our CBRAC um, community and has been utilized uh, all over the country to help in the treatment of COVID-19. Anytime our local health authority needs a resource, that's what the city and county are here to do, along with their partner, CBRAC, the Regional Advisory Council, who focuses on trauma and making sure our hospitals have the resources they need. Once again, we make a transition. I, I just had to ask somebody what day it was. I didn't even realize it was Cinco de, uh, de Mayo, the 5th of, uh, of May. I suppose that's probably a testament to the fact that every day feels the same for me. I feel that we are doing a very strong response all over the state to help Texas in its second disaster, that is the economic disaster. But I'm also very mindful that uh, we are not by any means um, in a situation where we can forget all that we've learned. And so this now presents another challenge. I'm not even sensing that we had enough transition to understand what it feels like to be operating at 25% in retails and restaurants. But you know what? We'll rise to the challenge. Would I have liked more time? Perhaps. Transitions are always hard. But we will rise to this challenge. And as we open more and more businesses, it will allow for our economy to recover. But it's going to require tremendous responsibility. I want to avail all business owners that find themselves in the new May 8th opening or in the May 18th opening to call our hotline if they need help, if they need guidance. We've created an entire operation of advisors that help have helped us with our churches when they reopened, helped us with our restaurants when they reopened, helped us with our retailers, and we can help you too. So please let us know if we can be helpful at 414-6000 or county.attorney at Co. Dot com. And with that, I will leave you. I just need you to keep practicing all of these good measures. I do not want to see us get into this great place where we're reopening businesses and we, we lose the gains that we have locked in. So at any rate, um, my hope is, is that if you have any questions, I will be around to answer them. And we look forward to um, this new reopening and our opportunity to work with you and make sure that your businesses are, um, are working. Thank you. Quiero darles un resumen de la conferencia que dio el gobernador hace unas horas. Este viernes entra en vigor la apertura de salones de belleza, salones de bronceado y de cuidado de, de uñas. Podrán reabrir, aunque con limitación y practicando distanciamiento social. Los gimnasios podrán reabrir a un 25% de su capacidad el 18 de mayo, aunque las regaderas se mantendrán cerradas. De acuerdo a bodas y funerales, también tendrán que practicar el distanciamiento social. A 18,000 personas se les tomó una prueba por parte de la Guardia Nacional durante los últimos días en el estado de Texas. Si usted forma parte de la población vulnerable, es importante que llame si cuenta, aunque sea con un solo síntoma, haga una cita para que le hagan la prueba. El número a llamar es el 512-883-2400. Este día jueves 7 de mayo vamos a tener una unidad móvil en Bishop a las 8 de la mañana. Llame al 826-7200 para hacer una cita. También quiero dar, decirle a los dueños de negocios que podrán abrir el 8 de, o 18 de mayo que nos llamen al número 414-6000 si tienen dudas sobre las reglas a seguir antes de que reabran sus negocios. Thank you, Mayor Joe McComb. Uh, Judge Canales, I think, uh, gave an excellent uh, report on what the governor's uh, comments were today, so I won't go into a lot of detail on that. But a couple of things that the governor did to say that uh, struck me was that uh, the percentage 
of the positive tests in Texas uh, are continuing to decrease. And that's with the, obviously, the expanded uh, testing. And I think that uh, that's a very good sign that uh, while the numbers of positives may be going up, as we get the, a better idea of how many that is as a percentage of our population, uh, that's going down. So that ought to give people uh, quite a bit of comfort. And they're up to, I think he said his goal was 25,000 a day. They, they did mention that uh, uh, on Tuesday they tested 19,000 in one day. So uh, with the National Guard uh, involved and the increase in, in supplies that are being made available now by the suppliers, testing is being increased all over the state, and we're very grateful for that. And I think you're seeing that reflected here in the number of tests that we're being able to give. Um, again, uh, We've been working uh, while on the medical side and the COVID side, uh, there's been a lot of work done, but also on the side that deals with the federal and the state governments in terms of what they can help us do as cities and counties. Uh, there's a lot of work, a lot of conference calls, a lot of Zoom meetings. Uh, I never knew what a Zoom meeting was till this project started, but uh, I've learned now <laughs> that, that you can have a Zoom meeting pretty fast. So. Um, uh, we're grateful for that technology, and it does come in handy. It gets a lot of people together in a very short period of time, and that really is good. Uh, we've uh, we've got another Zoom meeting set for Thursday. Senator uh, Judith Zaffarini is going to be hosting another uh, Zoom meeting for her area, and uh, uh, we're having somebody there from the Attorney General's office to answer any questions any of us have in terms of the governor's orders or any other questions that we may have as we continue to work our way through this uh, current governor's order that we're in now. And if there's any questions or clarifications, that's gonna to prove to be very helpful. Uh, Senator uh, Chuy Hinojosa has been also very helpful in, in providing information to us. Uh, and he is a key player right now because he serves on the committee uh, at the state level that is working with the governor that will be uh, making the allocations to the cities and counties that are under 500,000. Under the CARES Act, if you've been following it a little bit, any, any county or city over 500,000 has a direct access to Washington and their allocations, but any county or city under 500,000, it came to the state as a block grant, and then the state does the administration, and our Senator Hinojosa is on that committee, and so uh, we feel very good uh, about his uh, presence on that committee. I had a phone call with him yesterday and was very encouraged with uh, uh, what uh, they're working on and the formulas, and this money will be coming to help uh, the cities and counties, depending on uh, which ones they are that are under the 500,000. Uh, some of this money, well, all of this money that will be coming is, it's a, it's a designated use of uh, funds, and that is that the money is to reimburse the cities uh, for any uh, coronavirus expenses that, that, that the cities have incurred, because this money has had to be pulled out of reserves or or taken out of programs and, and projects that the cities have had, which has really been a, uh, a negative to our normal routine uh, provision of services or a cutback until we can get this resolved. So uh, any funds that we can get uh, that uh, have been taken out of one budget item to cover corona expenses, uh, coronavirus expenses, uh, then can uh, uh, repay those uh, uh, funds, and that will go a long way in trying to make sure that uh, we don't have uh, any slowdown or uh, interruptions. But the uh, the good thing is that uh, with, uh, we've got those calls with uh, Senator Zaffarini, and then on Friday, uh, Senator Ted Cruz is gonna be on another Zoom conference call, and that's with the big city mayor's uh, group. And uh, we're talking to them about uh, uh, this next round of, of funding. And one of the things that we're going to be stressing with that senator, as we did with John Cornyn earlier in a conference, was that while there's funds that are coming down to the cities, uh, now part of the discussion is, and part of the debate in Washington, is that uh, they wanna make sure that the funds they get go to cities uh, that can help the cities and not really just bail cities out. But uh, what uh, we're going to encourage is that we would like as much flexibility in those funds as possible to help us offset some of the dramatic loss of revenue uh, that we had budgeted for this year. For instance, in Corpus Christi, our hotel motel taxes have been severely reduced, as well as our sales tax. And that, uh, I think the city manager forecasts somewhere between uh, nine and $14 million uh, 
um, I think the early projection, and um, we'll be getting those numbers in pretty quick here now that, uh, that we're in a new month to kind of see what the impact really is going to be. So we're going to try to get as much flexibility to help us offset some of those lost revenues uh, as a result of the, uh, the virus. But to me, uh, we need to take a lot of pride, and I think the judge hit on this, and I think this is something that we can take a lot of pride in. While we get a lot of calls, I do, uh, and emails, uh, people saying, you know, I see people everywhere and they're not wearing their masks. Well, the public needs to understand that, that there's a lot of push to get people to wear their masks, but they are not required. And so, you know, we, we can't go out and force people to wear a mask. They're not required. We highly encourage it. And uh, we, we emphasize it in every meeting that I've been in. Uh, more than one person does that, but it's, they're not required. And so um, uh, we appreciate your calling and asking and expressing your concern about it, but they are not required. But uh, we do emphasize it and encourage it because we think it's a good thing. But the, the, the real sign, I think, to the city and, and the county in terms of what we're doing is that if you take just the numbers that we've done in our city based on today's numbers of 114 cases and 3,191 tests, that gives us a percentage of 3.5%, uh, which is excellent in terms of numbers compared to the rest of the country. I've heard them say if, we can, if people can get that under 10%, they're going to be happy. Well, we're at 3.5%, so uh, congratulations, Corpus Christi and Oasis County. We'd like to get that down to 1%. Actually, we'd like to get it to 0%. And if you will, even though you're not mandated to, if you would put that mask on. You may not think it helps, but it does. It helps psychologically as well as it could help you uh, keep you from getting it or from spreading it. So show a little kindness to your neighbors. Uh, we're living in a different world right now. And, uh, you know, some of that old-fashioned kindness. And again, uh, remember what your mother and grandmother taught you. Uh, wash your hands. If you're healthy, stay away from sick people. And if you're sick, stay away from healthy people. It's pretty simple. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to understand that. We've been taught that from our grandmothers and our mothers. And so uh, that seems to be a winning formula. And for citizens that practice that, uh, we're, it's paying off. And I think Corpus Christi has done remarkable well, remarkably well uh, in uh, paying attention to that. So uh, keep up the good work. We're not out of the woods yet, but uh, we're making great strides, and we're looking forward to uh, – uh, I know some were very excited about to uh, hear that uh, – Barbershops and beauticians could open up. I'm, uh, I'm going to find out if how much this additional weight that I've gained uh, is attributable to the hair that I've gained. I'm going to go get my hair cut Friday when they open, <laughs> and I hope it amounts to a whole lot of weight, but I'm not sure I'm going to do it. But uh, anyway, we're easing back in. I think the public's excited about it, uh, but at the same time, they need to be uh, mindful and uh, wear those masks, think about other people, and think, you know, would I want somebody exposing my wife or daughter or son or husband? Um, you know, I wouldn't want them to do that, and I don't want to do it to them. So, uh, as it says, you know, be ye kind one to another. Uh, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. So, pulling together, all rowing the boat in the same direction, we're going to get out of this, and the more, the harder we row and the harder we pull, the quicker we're going to get across the finish line. So, thank you very much, and I call Peter back up to close it out and uh, answer any questions that you may have. Un par de cosas que me llamaron la atención sobre la información que dio el gobernador es que las cifras de las pruebas han aumentado y los resultados positivos al virus han disminuido. En cuanto a los gobiernos federales y estatales, hemos tenido varias conferencias este miércoles. Vamos a tener juntas para trabajar con representantes estatales, entre ellos Judith Zafirini y Chuy Hinojosa. Esta es nuestra oportunidad para evaluar diferentes cuestiones, incluidas la forma en que se distribuirán fondos a ciudades con poblaciones menores al millón de personas. Este viernes tendremos una junta con el senador Ted Cruz para tratar cómo los fondos ayudarán a las municipalidades y poder así superar algunas de las pérdidas que hemos tenido, por ejemplo, en los impuestos a las ventas debido a la pandemia. Me llegan muchas quejas de gente que indica que otras personas no están usando cubrebocas. Les recuerdo que no es una obligación, pero sí una sugerencia que nosotros avalamos. Okay, good. I'm just going to uh, add one uh, updated point, and we put this slide back up for the, for the National Guard testing, this one over here. 
That number that's on the screen uh, for testing, that takes place Thursday. That'll be at the Memorial drive through the former M Memorial Hospital parking lot drive through That number is going to be accessible, or the appointment availability, the appointment booking will be available beginning tonight at midnight. Okay, so you can't, if you call now, it's not going to, you won't really get through. So if you want to test Thursday at the former Memorial Hospital parking lot through the National Guard, the number here to call is right there, but uh, don't call until midnight tonight. So midnight through, uh, I guess, Wednesday probably, yeah, Wednesday uh, evening, you can get a reservation for that uh, testing at the National Guard. Okay, so that was a lot of information we covered for you this afternoon. It includes uh, some of the updates on the governor's uh, orders. Uh, a lot of this information is on the city county webpage. If you go to the city or New Aces County's homepage, you'll see a link to our coronavirus webpage. And um, the governor uh, also has a webpage where he, uh, by the time our, by the time we uh, got all his news, some of the links still weren't active in terms of backup material and documents that he puts out. So soon, uh, it may be there by now, but uh, uh, check the governor's website as well to see some of the orders that he did as well as some of the supporting documents and uh, manuals or guides that he has put out in the past that's available for the community as well. Okay, so with that, <clears throat> we're, gonna <clears throat> we're gonna conclude today's press briefing and myself and others that have been here presenting uh, are available for any questions that you might have. And we know Courtney has some, so we're gonna <laughs> let him start. Uh, the governor's <laughs> used the 25% occupancy rule for the things that he's allowed to open. Is there any local uh, enforcement of that? Of the 25% occupancy rule? Well, uh, we talked about it, and I'll let the judge speak about it as well. So uh, we had a Chris Six town hall meeting uh, last week, and uh, that was one of the questions that came up. And the answer then, and it's still the same today, and the judge will also add to this, is that the business community really has stepped up in helping us manage COVID-19 across our community. They, any order we've put in place, they've, they've been right there with us uh, enforcing it. We don't have enough, the sheriff or the, the, the city's police department doesn't have enough enforcement to go to every business and make sure they're abiding by the rules, but nor do we think we have to. Why? Because we have a great business community out there. So we're relying on the business leaders to make sure that they enforce themselves. They have to self-regulate. Uh, we do know that people call in. There was a case today, in fact, the health director was telling me about where there was a facility that was open that shouldn't have been open, and that was a call that somebody else made. It wasn't a business person, per se. So uh, we have people that call on, call in on each other, which is okay, I guess. And so we followed up on that. So uh, we need to continue to have that professional and, and uh, excellent partnership we have with the business community and, and hope that they continue to enforce these rules. And having said that, though, we do have a police department. Chief Markle knows about these laws and orders, and we have a fine sheriff, Sheriff Hooper. So we're available here from the city and the county from a public safety and law enforcement standpoint to go in and enforce if we need to. Uh, we, we have seen, though, over the past weeks that we have a great business community, and we don't think we need to redirect all our, all our officers to do that type of enforcement because we know they're doing it themselves. I, I don't know if the judge wants to add a little bit more to that. Well, I wish I could take my phone and let your camera zoom in on it, but these are a series of pictures that were sent to me not too long ago and also were sent to the city manager. And it shows basically a tremendous amount of trash on the beaches that basically because the trash cans are overloaded and that's because the beaches are overloaded. There's also some display here of clearly not social distancing on Bob Hall Pier as well as... Um, you know, a, not a pretty picture of too many people not social distancing on the beach. And this is a very big weekend. It's, it's a very special weekend for families. And as a mother myself, I'm looking forward to the weekend with my family. And I really think that um, it's going to be absolutely imperative that, that we figure out that just because we are opening up, it doesn't mean there won't be any enforcement. We, we are working on ways that we can message more appropriately so that we can keep enforcing and educating. But when we get these pictures, I need citizens to know that I care. Keep sending them to me because I react to them. 
And I want you to know the trash has already been taken care of because um, not only because Scott Cross is texting me, but because I know that when I send it to him at Coastal Parks, I know they are going to get. I know they're going to address these matters. But we are experiencing an unprecedented amount of travel. I believe all our short-term rentals are booked, and there is 80 miles of beach, and we need to use it. And we've got to figure out a way to do this right. One of the things the General Land Office sent to us when they sent guidance about keeping our beaches open was making sure that we had the authority to police areas where there's absolutely a complete wanton disregard for the spirit of this order. And I want you to know that when I get these pictures, I agree with Peter. I think the overwhelming majority of people are doing it right. But we have a problem on our beaches and we need everybody's help. It starts with you at home. If you care enough to listen to this press briefing, it's because you care about the health and welfare of you and your family. Please, let's make sure that we can do this together. What is the enforcement, Courtney? It starts with us. It starts with us. We're going to have to tell our friends and our kids and our parents and whoever else is gonna go out there to the beach or any other park where they can congregate, hey, Sounds like a great idea. Sounds like a lot of fun. But we're going to have to figure out a place where we can be social distance from everybody else. This plan to reopen will not work without us pitching in and making it work together. So I just want you to know that I'm pretty, I'm pretty uh, focused on enforcement this week. I'm, I was really fevered, you know, pitched about testing last week. And now that we've gotten to see those results, I'm going to focus on enforcement. But it doesn't matter how much I want it. This isn't about hope. <laughs> I can't hope it to be better. We need to make it better. And we're going to start by working with our partners at the beach to do everything that we can to help out. And I, I really want to message that. And, and I hope that it gets heard because, again, it's like medicine you don't want to take it's good for you, and it'll be, it'll be the medicine that gets us well. So please, I just want to focus on the enforcement of the beaches and the piers. This pier, the picture I just got of this pier, is 100% unacceptable. And there is no doubt that while there is a right to be on those beaches, the county judge can control the occupancy of those premises and can control the movement of people. And I just, I cannot allow people to get hurt because I didn't have the courage to act. So we will act. I don't want to. I mean, I love fishing. Let's keep these piers open. Let's keep these beaches open. Let's do the right thing. And that's where the enforcement starts. It starts with my firm, you know, um, discussion of this matter. El número para llamar para negocios que vayan a abrir para si necesitan sí, ayuda. Sí, el número el número es 414-6000. Si tienes una pregunta, estos órdenes son nuevos del gobernador. Recuérdate que no van a empezar hasta el 8 de mayo. El 8 de mayo vamos a abrir los salones, este, um, diferentes negocios que, que yo acabo de um, de leer también el 18. Este, vamos a abrir eh, los gimnasios y todavía los bars están cerrados y no tenemos idea cuándo van a empezar. Pero el número para hablar es 414-6000 si tienes preguntas y también el, el correo electrónico es county.attorney.com. Gracias. Okay, do we have any other questions for today? Okay, very good. That'll conclude our press briefing for today. So today's Tuesday. Tomorrow it'll be Annette uh, Rodriguez, our health director, and myself. We'll have probably a shorter briefing, uh, just brief you on the statistics and some of the updates. And then the, uh, County Judge Barbara Canales and Mayor Joe McComb will be back with us on Thursday. And then Friday, by the way, we will have um, an update of our, UT, uh, our uh, Texas A&M Corpus Christi uh, modeling project. We haven't talked to the professors yet this week, but we will be probably by tomorrow and Thursday to see how that's coming along. We'll get an update on the, that cell phone data 
uh, distancing that they've really been honing in on. And uh, we're hoping we don't see a correlation of number of increases in cases, but nonetheless, we'll have that update on Friday and uh, other stuff that they have been tracking for us. So that's Friday. So we'll see you tomorrow. Be safe. Thank you.